Good afternoon and welcome to the English Book Club with me, Teach Lynn, your teacher, whatever. <laughs> and yes, we've got uh, our readers here. I've just got to remember who's on the reading list. I forgot to cut and paste it. Ah! Okay, so today's readers are a short visit from Paulette. So Paulette, you, you know what I always say, you can stop whenever you need to. So if you only can read for 30 seconds, it doesn't matter. Then Eleanor, Alexandra, Nina and Hermina. And I think I've got everybody. <laughs> so let me invite everybody in to speak and get you all into the room. And hopefully you can hear me and I can hear you and there's no echo, I hope. Okay, so can you hear me, Nina? <laughs> Very oh, well. Nobody can hear me. Oh, you can. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> Phew. And Alexa, can you hear me? Can I hear you? Yes, I can hear. But I have Ex my own echo. And you got echo. Oh no. Um, let me see Sorry. what I can do about that. No, it's not your fault. It's um, probably me. I don't know why, though, because I've not changed anything. Uh, let me just see if I can do something about it. Um, I hate computers. Truly, truly hate them. Let me just see. Okay, could uh, Alexa, can you say something? Yes, no echo. Lucky we. Excellent. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay. Phew. <laughs> so, um, Paulette, can I hear you? Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, you can hear me. Hello. Oh, you're sounding a bit brighter today than yesterday. Excellent. Good, good, good. And as I said before, you're going to start and you finish as soon as you feel you need to. Or I'll stop you after five minutes, but don't feel you've I got to do I don't think it will go for five minutes. Neither do I. <laughs> Hermina, can I hear you? Can you hear me? Uh, for me, I can hear you, Lynn. I can hear you. Good, good, good. <laughs> no, that was Hermina, not, not Nina. And Eleanor, can I hear you? Can you hear me? Always a scary moment. Yeah, it's scary. Can you hear me? I can hear you beautifully, Hi. yes. Excellent. So, um, let me look at the pinned messages and go over to the book. And if you look from last week, we're, you've got a fantastic place to start, um, Paulette because we're starting at chapter 18, <laughs> chapter 12, I mean. Page 83 in the book, um, the PDF file, I should say. It's 78 in the book. Chapter 12, I hear of the red fox. So it's <laughs> it couldn't be easier to follow that one. <laughs> it was almost made for you. Okay, so yeah. as soon as you are feeling comfortable, if you would like to... Yes, <clears throat> thank you. Chapter 12. I hear of the red fox. Before we got done cleaning out the roundhouse, a breeze sprang up from a little to the east from north. This blew off the, ra this blew off the rain and brought out the sun. And there I must explain, and the reader would do well to look at the map. On the day when the fog fell, and we ran down Alan's boat. We had been running through a lit through, through the little minch. At dawn after the battle, we lay calmed to the east of the Isle of Cana, or between that and Isle Esrica, and the chain of the Long Island. Now to get from there from the Linlock, the straight course was through the narrows of the Sound of Mole. But the captain had no chart. He was afraid no he was afraid to trust his brig so deep among the islands and the wind serving well. He preferred to go by west of Tyre and come up under the southern coast of the great Isle of 
Mull. All day the breeze held in the same point, and rather freshened than died down, and towards afternoon a swell began to set in a swell began to set in from round the, the outer hybrids our course to go round about the inner isles was to the west of south so that at first we had this swell upon our beam and were much rolled about but after nightfall when we had turned the end of Tyree and begun to head more to the east the sea came right eastern, uh, eastern. Meanwhile, the early part of the day before the swell came up was very pleasant sealing, as we were in a bright sunshine and with many mountainous islands upon different sides. Allen and I sat in the round house with the doors open on each side, the wind being straight eastern and smoked a pipe or two of the captain's fine tobacco. It was at this time we heard each other's stories, which was the more important to me as I gained some knowledge of that wild highland country, country on which I was to, on which I was so soon to land. In those days, so close on the back of the great rebellion, it was needful a man. It was needful a man should know what he doing, what he was doing when he went upon the header. I stop here. Thank you. I'm on, I need to unmute ah, ah, on here. Okay, so as I say, well done. You don't get away with corrections. words the Hebrides Stern. Knowledge. Knowledge. With the doors open on each side.
Thank you for letting me in. Yes. Okay, I am. Excellent. Good, good, good. Oh, I don't know if um, I might have knocked my mic off again. Oh, well, never mind. If I did, I, I apologise. Uh, the words were towards Hebrides, astern, knowledge, and with the doors open on each side. <laughs> Oh, I'm not doing very well this morning, this afternoon, this evening, I don't know, today. <laughs> <laughs> and I was up very early, okay? I could have beaten the early bird. <laughs> okay, Eleanor, as soon as you are ready, if you'd like to... It was I that showed the example, telling him all my misfortune, which he had with great good nature. Only when I came to mention that good friend of mine, Mr. Campbell, the minister, and then fired up and cried up that he hated all that were of that name. Why, said I, he is a man, is a man you should be proud to give your hand to. I know nothing, I would hear the Campbell too says he, unless it was a leaden bullet. I would hunt all of that name like black cocks. If I lay dying, I would crawl upon my knees to my chamber window for a shot at one. Why, Alan, I cried, what ails he at the Campbells? Well, says he, he can very well that I am an Epping steward, and the Campbells have long harried and wasted those of my name, I, and got lands of us by treachery, but never with the, with the sword. He cried loudly, and with the word brought down his fist upon the table. But I paid the less attention to this, for I knew it was usually said by those who held the underhand. There's more than that, he continued, and all in the same story, lying words, lying papers, tricks, fit for a peddler, and the show of, uh, the show of what's legal ever all to make a man the more angry. You that are so wasteful of your buttons, said I, I can hardly think you would be a good judge of business. Ah, says he, falling again to smiling. I got my wastefulness from the same man I got the buttons from. And that was my poor father, Duncan Stewart. Grace be to him. He was the prettiest man of his kindred, and the best swordsman in the Helands, David, and that is the same as to say, in all the world, I should can, for it was him that taught me. He was in the Black Watch when first it was mastered, and like other gentlemen privates, had a gilly at his back to carry his firelock for him on the march. Well, the king, it appears, was wishful to see Helan's swordsmanship, and my father and three more were chosen out and sent to London town to let him see it at the best. So they were had into the palace and showed the hell art of the sword for two hours at a stretch, before King George and Queen Carline, and the butcher Cumberland, and many more of whom I have nigh mind. And way they were through, the king, for all he was a rank usurper, spoke them fair and gave each man three guineas in his hand. Now, as they were going out of the palace, they had a potter's lodge to go by, 
and it came in on my father, as he was perhaps the first private Hiran gentleman who had ever gone by that door. It was right he should give the poor porter a proper notion of the quality. So he gives the king's three guineas into the man's hand as if it was his common custom. The three others that came behind him did the same. And there they were on the street, never a penny the better for their pains. Some say it was one that was the first to fee the king's potter, and some say it was another. But the truth of it is that it was Duncan Stewart, as I am willing to prove with either sword or pistol. And that was the father that I had. God rest him. I think he was not the man to leave you rich, said I. Very good. Well That's done. True. <laughs> <Not> Excellent. <laughs> yep. Lip. <laughs> okay. Nicely read. Well done. Any questions before I give Eleanor her very short feedback? I have one question, but this is not oh. in this uh, passage. Oh, I thought. Okay, well, then leave it till afterwards. <laughs> Anybody else? Something that's from the passage? So I can find it? <laughs> nope, okay. Then just the two words, Eleanor. Uh, the first one is the stress. It's not but ons, it's buttons. Uh, buttons. Uh, yeah, buttons, buttons. Okay. That, that's it. But ons would be something slightly different because a but is oh, the word oh, for no. bottom. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I should think so. And then prettiest. You've got to get the ear. Okay. Oh, okay. Prettiest. 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 I That's it. Yes. I feel pretty. You're so pretty. <laughs> Very yeah, good. Well done. A song. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So uh, the next person to read is Alexandra. Alexandra, are you with us? Oh, yes, I am. Excellent. As soon as you are feeling comfortable, if you would like to start. Yes. Um, and that's true, said Alan. He left me my bricks to cover me and little besides. And that was how I came to en enlist, which was a black spot upon my character at the best of times and would still be a sore drop for me if I fell among the red hosts. What cried I, uh, were you in the English army? Uh, that was I, said Alan. But I decided to the right side at Preston Pens. And that's uh, some comfort. I could scarcely share this view, holding desertion under arms for an uh, unpardonable hold in honor. But for all I was uh, so young, I was wiser than say my uh, thoughts. Uh, dear dears, says I, the punishment is dead. I said he, if the god hangs uh, on me, it would be a short uh, shift shrift and a long tau for, for Alan. But I have the king of France commission in my pocket. It would I be some protection. I misdoubt is much, said I. I have doubts myself, said Alan briefly, uh, dryly. Uh, and uh, good heaven, man. Uh, cried I. You had uh, you uh, that are condemned a rebel and a deserter and man of the um, French kings. What tempts you yeah, back into uh, this country? It's a brave uh, of uh, providence. Good, says Alan. I have been back every year since uh, 46. 
and what brings you man cried i well you see i uh, uh, mm, i weary for my friends and country said he friends is a proud place no doubt no doubt i uh, but i weary for them um, mm, as a and the idea and then i have it things that i attend to as i pick up a few lads to serve the king of france recruits you see and that's i little money but the heart of the matter is the business of my chief chief. Ah, she did. Ah, she did. Oh, my God. I thought they called you Chief Apin, said I. I, but Archie is the captain of the, of the clan, said he. It scarcely cleared my mind. You see, David, um, he that was all his life so uh, great a man and come of the uh, blood and bearing the name of kings is now brought down to live in a French town like a poor and a uh, private person. He that had uh, 400 swords at uh, his whistle. I have seen with his eyes of mine buying butter in the marketplace and taking it home in, in a caliph. This is not only a pain, but a disgrace to us, of his uh, family and, and clan. Um, there are the parents for, for the children and, and the hope of Apin. It must be learned the letters and how to hold a sword in, in, that, for, in that far country. Now the tenants of Arping have to pay a rent to King George, but their hearts are sound. They are true to their chief, and uh, what with love and a bit of pressure, and maybe a treat or two, the poor folk scrape up a second rent for our shield. Well, there we I'm the hand that carries it, and he struck the belt about his body, so that the Guinness ran punk. Thank you. Very good. Well done. <laughs> okay, so nicely read. Let me just check my settings. I've been careful. <laughs> Excellent. Well done. Um, any questions before I give Alexandra her feedback? Uh, yes, uh, this is yeah, in this one. I will copy. Ah. I understand what it means, uh, or um, I think I do at least, but I haven't found this meaning in the dictionary, namely, okay. I, I really for, uh, so I would say it means I long, I miss my friend. Yes, yeah. weary. Uh, weary normally means tired, yeah. but in this case it means he's exhausted because he feels this urge to be home. Ah, but it's not trivial, this uh, syntax or this, or uh, am I wrong? Uh, it's not common. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, because I, I... Normally we weary of things, yeah? Uh, yes, yes uh, this, this, this has a negative uh, meaning because we would like to get rid of this and here he longs, uh, he missed he longs for it, yeah, because he's weary by missing it. <laughs> I see. Uh, okay, I have checked in the uh, uh, Scottish dictionary, but I haven't found this meaning. So yeah, normally it is, as I say, it's to weary of something or somebody. Uh, but here they're putting "I weary for," which is basically saying "I weary of missing." uh my friends and country but it's it's a sort of twisted round play with words okay <laughs> okay good 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 then alexandra let's have a look at your words um did i post them up no, no i didn't nope not yet <laughs> okay so 
The first word is fault, not like fold, fault. Fault, right? fault. That's it's it. not my There's fault. There's no fault in it. It's not your fault, no. <laughs> and then deserter, to desert, a deserter, not a deserter. Deserter. deserter, deserter. That's it. Good, good, good. Somebody who leaves AWOL. Have you heard of AWOL? Absent without leave from the army or somewhere is a deserter. It's like deserter then, from army. Military? That's military. it. Yes. From anywhere from the military, mm. they leave without permission. They are deserters. Okay. Now, the next one, I'm not going to split it down into syllables because it's country, not like count. Country. Try it. Country. That's it. Good, good, good. Thank you for not making me split it into syllables because it's very rude, the first syllable on its yes, own. Yes, <laughs> that's count. Country. Yeah, country. Country. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Perfectly innocent as long as you've got the tree on the end. Mm. Otherwise, be careful. Okay, next one is bra. 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 Yeah, good, good, good. And then lads. Lads. Lads, lads. That's it. And bands. 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 A bern. Bands. That's it. Which are children, basically. We bands, little children. And then staunch, a staunch ally. Staunch, staunch. That's it. Good. You get a smiley for dryly. Right. Dryly. That's it. Good, good, good. And then um, it's just the intonation of here. The king. Oh no, it's not. It's the uh, it's the possessive. The king of France, but it's his commission. So we use the possessive. The king of France's commission. Try it. The king of France's commission. Perfect. Well done. Thank you. Okay. So the next person to read is Nina. Nina, are you with us? Yes. And ready. Excellent. Okay. Bear with me one second. As soon okay. as you are feeling comfy, if you'd like to start. Okay. Do they pay both? Cried I. Ah, if, uh, ah David, both, says he. What? Two rents? I repeated. Hi, David, said he. I told a different tale to young Captain Man. But this is the truth of it. And it's wonderful to me how little pressure is needed. But that's the handwork of my good Kishman and my father's friend. James of Glens, James Stewart, death, uh, death is uh, Archfield, Archfield's ha half brother. He is, he it is that gets the money in and does the management. Management. Uh, this was the first time I heard the name of that James Stewart, who was afterwards so famous at the time of his hanging. But I took little heed at the moment, for all my mind as was occupied with the generosity of these poor Highlanders. I call it noble, I cried. I'm a Whig, or little better, but I call it noble. I said he, you're a Whig, but you're a gentleman, and that's what does it. Now, if we uh, were one of the cursed, cursed race of Campbell, yeah, would uh, gnash your teeth to hear tell of it. If you were the Red Fox, um, if we were the Red Fox, and at that name his teeth shut together and he ceased speaking. I have seen many a grim face, but never a grimmer than Ellen's when he had named the Red Fox. 
And who is the red fox? I asked, daunted, but still curious. Who is he? cried Ella. Uh, who is he? cried Ella. Well, and I'll tell you that. When the men of the clans were broken at uh, Culloden, and the good cause went down, and the horses rolled over the fatlocks in the best blood of the north, Archshield had to flee like a poor deer upon the mountains. Upon the mountains. He and his lad lady, he and his laid lady and his uh, band. Uh, a sir job uh, we had of it before we got him shipped. And while he still lay in the heather, the English rogues that could nay come at his life uh, were stricken at his right. They stripped him on his powers, they stripped him on his lands, they uh, plucked the weapons. Uh, from the hands of his clashmen, clashmen uh, that had borne arms for uh, 30 centuries. I and the very clothes of their, back, of their backs, so that it's now a thing to wear a tartan plain and a man may be cast into a gull Gaul, if he has uh, but a kilt about his legs. One thing they could not kill, that was the love the clash the clansmen bore their chief. Uh, these, guine uh, these guineas are the proof of in their steps. A man, a Campbell, Red, uh, red headed calling of uh, Glenu. Uh, Very good. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Excellent. Okay. Nicely done, Nina. Any questions before I give Nina her feedback? No. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? No? Okay, so, uh, yes, Alexa, Heather is often described in English literature, yes. <laughs> and it's a wonderful sight to see at the right time of year. It turns what's a grey, browny, dismal looking landscape into a brightly coloured, beautiful, uh, purpley, yeah, haze kind of thing. Purple haze, yeah. <laughs> okay, Nina, your feedback. Uh, so, the first one is truce. Like Ruth, but with a T. Truth. Try it. Truth. I don't understand. That's it. The whole truth and <laughs> uh, I can't remember. It was like truth, I think. Anyway. Um, the next one, it's handiwork, not handwork. Uh -huh. Handiwork. H handiwork. Yeah. So if, if it's somebody's handiwork, you can tell it's them that did it. So it's not necessarily like something that's been made by hand it can also be a criminal activity oh that's jack the ripper's handiwork yeah so it's a slightly different meaning to handwork okay then hanging there's no g in it it's just hanging right? hanging hanging ha yeah with the a hanging 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 yeah, try a bit fast try a bit faster hanging Hanging. That's it. Perfect. <laughs> then named silent E. Named. Yes. Named. But daunted, not down. Dawn. Daunted. Try it. Daunted. Yes. Daunted. That's it. Then striking. Striking. 
yeah to strike something to hit it yeah striking yeah. Yeah. and then stripped silent e stripped 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 that's it Pl yeah plucked silent plucked. e plucked. plucked plucked that's it good 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 then his clansmen clansmen Clan clansmen that's it the people of his clan the men of his clan and jail it's jail. not like goal it's a jail yeah it's a funny sometimes you will see it j-a-i-l yeah uh, but yeah. sometimes it is spelled g-a-o-l jail and then you get a smiley for a pun well done thank you teach oh is the silent e is a difficult oh i know <laughs> honestly it is something you just develop a feeling for over time mm -hmm okay don't worry about it i'm just here to correct you uh but people will understand you yes. just say upon for me upon okay thank you no say it upon upon that's better thank you <laughs> you have to say it so i know you've got it okay so the next person to read is hermina hermina are you with us and more importantly do you know where we are in the book <laughs> Uh, firstly, <laughs> yes, I am here with you, and second, yes, I am. I know the right line where I could so sha will start. Well done, well done. Yeah. Okay, so as soon as you are feeling comfortable, if you'd like to begin. Yeah, thank you, thank oh. you, uh, thank you to you all, and a special some nice wishes to Paulette, to our Paulette. Is that him you call the red fox? said I. Will you bring me his brush? cries Alan fiercely. Hey, that's the man. In his steps and gets papers from King George to be so called King's Factor on the lands of Appin. And at first he si he, he sings small and is hail fellow well met with Shemas. That's James of the Glens, my chieftain's agent, but by and by, but by and by, but by and by, that came to his ears that I have just told you, how the poor commons of Appin, the farmers and the crofters and the bowmen, were wringing their very plates to get a second rent and sent it overseas for Archils and his poor pains. What was this you called it when I told you? I called it noble, Alan said I, and you little better than a common wig, cries Alan. But when it came to Colin Roy and Black Campbell blood in him ran wild, he said gnashing, not gnashing his teeth at the wine table. What? Should a steward get a bite of bread and him not be able to prevent it? Ah, Red Fox, if ever I hold you at a gun's end, the Lord have pity upon you. Alan stopped to swallow down his anger. Well, Davy, what does he do? He declares all the farms to let and thinks he and his black heart. I'll soon get other tenants that'll overbit these stewards and macaws and macrobes for these are all names in my clan david and then thinks he our chills will have to hold his bonnet on a french roadside well said i what followed alan laid down his pipe which he had long since suffered to go out and set his two hands upon his knees Eh, hey, said he, you'll never guess that, for these same stewards and macaws and macrobes that had due rents to pay, one to King George by stark force and one to Archil by natural kindness, offered him a better price than any couple in all broad Scotland, and far he sent seeking them, as far as to the sites of Clyde and the Gross of Edinburgh seeking and fleeching, and, be and begging them to come, where there was a steward to be starved, and a red-headed 
found of a Campbell to be pleasant. To be pleasured. Well, Alan, said I, that is, is a strange story and a fine one, too. A week as I may be, I am glad the man was beaten. Him beaten? echoed Alan. It's little yen ken of Campbell's and less of the Red Fox. Him beaten? No, no will be. Till his platz and the hillside, but if the day comes, David man, that I can find time and leisure for a bit of hunting, there it grows not enough heather in all Scotland to hide him from my <coughs> uh, vengeance. <coughs> man, Alan, said I, you are neither very wise nor very Christian to blow off so many words of anger. They will do the man ye call the fox no harm, and yourself no good. Tell me your tale plainly out. What did he next? And that's a good observe, David, said Alan. Troth, and indeed they will do him no harm. The more's the pity. And barring that about Christianity, of which my opinion is quite otherwise, or a white pure Christian. Oh. I am much of your mind. Opinion here. Very good. Okay. <coughs> Very good. Well done. Nicely read. Okay. You forgot your glass of water again, didn't you, Hamina? What did I? You forgot your glass of water. Yeah, as always. <laughs> as always. <laughs> You're right, okay. I'm going to write it in the next, uh, if I remember, I'm going to write it in the next session. Hamina, get yourself a glass of water. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. Well done, ladies. Indeed. Yes, we did well today. Okay, so any questions before I give Hamina her very short feedback? No? Nobody's asking any questions? Nope. Okay then. The first word, Hermina, is natural. It's not like nature. Okay. It's natural. That's it. Something's natural. It's Most things are natural, uh, but nature has an E on the end. Okay. Okay. Then the next one is swallow. It's an O. Oh, swallow. Try it. A swallow. That's it. One swallow does not a summer make. That's the bird, the swallow. It also means to swallow. When you've chewed your food, you should swallow it. So it goes down into your tummy. OK, then you get, you actually get more smileys than you've got corrections. Well done. Uh, you get three smileys. First one, sings. Sings. That's it. And then gnashing. Gnashing. Very good. A gnashing of teeth. <laughs> and pleasured. Pleasured. That's it. Very good. Well done. Okay, that brings us to the end of today's reading. So, oh, that sounds very biblical. That's how we end today's reading. And we are on page ooh, 89 in the book. Uh, and in the actual copy of the PDF, it's page 84. And it's at the beginning, which is why I stopped you where I did, because it's so much easier than going down the page. Opinion here or opinion there. OK, so let me put that into the text here. Here are all your corrections together first. And then this is where we're up to for next session. OK, so let me just make sure I pin it. If everybody agrees with me, you are allowed to disagree with me again. No, Lynn, you made a mistake again. <laughs> no, nobody's going to argue with me. Excellent. I must have got it right. OK, so thank you so much for coming and for making a very special effort, Paulette. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped relax you. And uh, we're hoping you'll 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 do a minute then you'll do two minutes then you'll do three minutes and you'll be back up to five minutes yes, in no time you. at all my, my peacemaker was an alarm oh gosh okay no you can't ignore that okay all right so everybody take care and i will see you all in the next session on thursday and maybe tomorrow i don't know we'll see we'll see maybe a pop-up tomorrow <laughs> bye thanks thanks a lot you're all very brave take care
拜拜。